the Dust Bowl. The Depression, as we often speak of it, we like to say began in 1929 with the collapse of the stock market after a period of protracted selling. But this overlooks a very important fact, that the Depression, for many, was already in full swing while the 20s were roaring. Yes, I'm referring to the Dust Bowl, one of America's most intriguing combinations of economic and climate-based, uh, shall we say, catastrophes. So, without further ado, let us begin. All right, so let's get started with the Great Plains game. Now, let me be very frank here. I have switched into this folksy sound and farming voice because I want to get all of you into the mindset of a farming folk. So, first of all, you're going to take out your notebook, your journal, whatever it is you're writing in, and I do want to see the results of this game, so please do play along just as if you were here in class. Now, you are playing the part of the owner of a farm. Now, you're going to divide your page into five columns. In each column, you're going to include the year. Is it year one, year two, year three, year four, year five? You get the idea. The amount of money you spent, the amount of money you earned, your profit, and your debt. So, again, if you're looking for the if, after you subtract how much you spent from how much you earned, if you've got money left over in, ter- in the positive, you have earned money. If not, you might have a debt. Each year, put down how much you will spend based on the information provided. Alrighty. So let's get started. Year one. The cost of wheat is $2 per bushel. Now, a low-tech yield, meaning you don't exactly have a lot of farming equipment, it's going, you're going to produce 450 bushels on your 10 acres of land. Now, a mechanized yield is going to produce 1,000 bushels on those same 10 acres. Now, the cost to get all mechanized is altogether a grand scheme of $10,000 with yearly installment payments of $1,000. Now, if you want to buy more land, it's $20 per acre. All right, so I hope you all found that interesting. So write down what it is you intend to do and how much you made that year. We're going to assume starting out in this, you had 10 acres of farmland. So how much did you produce? How much are you producing? And how much are you spending and all that? All right? All right. Year two, wheat is now $4 per bushel. So once again, a low-tech yield, if you chose to keep your farm low technology, is going to be 450 bushels per acre. Your mechanized yield is going to be thousand bushels, a.k.a. 10,000 bushels for 10 acres. So, you're making a lot more bushels of wheat. If you want to get all mechanized, the cost of getting there is going to be $10,000. Yearly installments are still $1,000. And if you want to purchase any more of that there land, it's going to cost you $20 per acre. So, take a moment or two to figure out what it is you're going to do. All right, write it all along down on that there paper. Once you've done that, we are going to move right on along, folks. Year three, your wheat is now $10 per bushel. So low-tech yield is 450 bushels per 10 acres. If you had mechanized, your, your yield is going to be 1,000 bushels per 10 acres. Now, the cost to mechanize is going to cost you $10,000. And if you choose to get on yearly installments, you're paying $1,000 per year. The land itself is going to cost $10 per acre. $20 per acre. So take your time. Figure out what you're going to do. All right, you made your decision. 
Excellent. Year four, wheat is now $12 per bushel. Well, everything else remains the same, so make your decisions accordingly. Year five, oh boy, we got a slip here. It's now only $6 for a bushel. So make all your decisions accordingly. Remember, you're trying to avoid that debt, so if there's a way you can make more money, maybe try and do it. Now wheat's back down to $2 per bushel, same as in year one. Figure out what you're going to do. Remember, mechanization costs $10,000, but it's $1,000 for a yearly installment fee. And remember, your land is $20 per acre. All right, everybody feeling good? Let's move on to year seven. Year seven, wheat is $1 per bushel. Low-tech yield is still 450 bushels per 10 acres. Mechanized yield is still 1,000 bushels per 10 acres. Mechanization cost is still $10,000. And your yearly installment on such a payment would be $1,000. Your land is $20 per acre. All right, now I got a question for all you farming folk. How many of you are in debt? Look at your balance sheet you've been working on. How many of you have found that you are spending more money than you're bringing in? Well, I hope you found this game here illuminating in terms of how it is that uh, this Dust Bowl business got all kicked out. So now we're going to talk about how the Dust Bowl actually managed to happen. All righty, all righty, folks. So... I hope you enjoyed that little uh, country western business. So, one of the big things that brings about the um, Dust Bowl is this promise of prosperity, right? Mechanized farm equipment, such as the steel plow, the McCormick Reaper, and other inventions allowed uh, for Great Plains farming, right? It, allowed, it made it easier to harvest large amounts of crops, easier to plant on the thick sodded soil, And it encouraged people to farm the Great Plains. Now, with the Great War breaking out, with the World War I breaking out, there was a demand for wheat. Remember, Russia had previously been the breadbasket of Europe. But with the war on, Germany and Austria-Hungary sat between Western Europe and the breadbaskets of East Russia. So, And with much of France's farmland being destroyed in the first during the fighting of the war... There was an incredible demand for farm products. The price of wheat went through the roof. And farmers found they could make a lot of money in the wheat business. Because not only were they providing for America, the Amer ordinary American citizens who needed wheat and corn and things like that. But also for the United States Army, which was demanding large amounts of the product. As well as customers in Europe, whose own... Local supply had been disrupted and were looking to supplement their, what little wheat they had with shipments of wheat from abroad. So there was lots of options for farmers in wheat and corn to make a lot of money. So once we take a look at that, so to do this, farmers bought land and equipment on credit in order to take advantage of the high grain price, right? So they did what I imagine a lot of you guys did in the middle of the Great Plains game, right? You started to invest in your farm, right? You bought mechanized farm equipment so you could uh, increase your yield from the land that you had. You may have also bought more land in order to produce more crops. You probably did some combination of both, mechanizing your farm and buying more land. And when things were good, right? Think about those early parts of the game, right? Your wheat price went from $2 to $4, uh, the 6 to 10 to 12, right? It went up, right? You know, your, your grain price kept rising until you hit $12 per bushel, right? And that was a good time. So during those good years, it was very easy to justify investing because you could turn a huge profit. Remember, if you paid on installment, right, you only owed the bank $1,000 for a year. Think about those years when 
a bushel sold for $10 or $12 and you were making well, you were bringing in well in excess of $10,000 a year. You'd have had, and all you had to do was pay the bank a thousand of those dollars towards your mechanized farm equipment and the rest of it you were free to put in your pocket. Now, and this is what actual farmers did. They did stuff like this. And then the bus came. Well, with the end of the war, grain prices dropped off. Why? Well, for one, Russia was back trading with the world. And by so doing, that added more grain into the world's grain supply. Additionally, with the war no longer being held in eastern France, many of the more provincial lands of eastern France were suddenly opened up to um, farming in France. And because of this, and with America no longer at war, the U.S. Army reduced its size of the armed forces and was no longer buying the immense amounts of grain it once had. So because of this, farmers now are in an interesting position, right? They're the price of grain starts dropping. Think about in the later part of the game, right? The price went from $12 to $6 and back down to $2 the way it had before all this started. Now, the problem is, now, in order to compensate for all of this, farmers begin to plow more land. That's a big thing, right? So, one way to make up for this, right? Think, think about when it went from 12 to 6, right? So if previously you'd been a cut, let's say previously you'd had 10,000 acres and you were growing X amount of wheat, you know, right? $12 a pop, you were making around, you know, you were making 120, you, know, you were making like $120,000, or so, you know, you make it well in excess of twelve thousand dollars. Not hundred twenty, twelve thousand. I'm sorry, twelve thousand dollars. You're making twelve thousand dollars, or so. Now, the problem is now, if suddenly that price gets cut in half, one way you could try to regain your life, there's some is to have more land, right? Plant more. The more you plant, right? If you double your yield you'll still make the same amount of money even if the price is cut in half. The problem is, as everybody does this, you now flood the market with grain. And in keeping with supply and demand, when there's a large quantity and the supply goes up and the demand remains the same, price is going to go down. And that's what happened, right? So suddenly, um, this surplus of grain that flooded the market drove prices even lower. And then the soil takes to the skies. So then as if this all couldn't get any worse, it did. See, then a drought set in. And when that drought set in, um, there, was no, there wasn't a lot of rain. Now, the thing about the Great Plains is its soil is a mass of what's called sod, which is... Uh, a combination of decaying plant and animal matter that forms very rich soil. However, that soil usually had to be held in place by deep-rooted grass and moisture. The drought eliminated the moisture, and the farming process involved the farmers getting rid of the uh, deep-rooted grasses in order to plant crops. Now, on top of that, wheat and corn tend to be nitrogen-reducing crops. They take the nitrogen, a vital mineral, out of the soil. And as a result of this, the topsoil, the, oh, the outermost layer of the ground, became dry and crumbly and was easily picked up by the winds sweeping across the Great Plains and turned into massive dust storms, the kind that are similar, similar to the sandstorms one often finds in, on the Sahara Desert except made of earthen dust instead of particles of sand. And this ultimately became what gives this event its title, the Dust Bowl. So, 
in a minute, we're going to look at the health and human consequences of this endeavor because they're quite jarring. 